How do you get to know people? Through psychologisms? Studying books? No. The best knower of people is someone who has large experience and who experienced all of the pettiness and greatness of human minds within themselves. The greater the experience in seeing that and understanding means that you can penetrate human minds like that. Without all these studies, you may order it through studying to expand on that. However, each time you enter a relation with someone, if you control this relation and wear masks according to your need, you acquire the perspective. At first, you try to see what they're about, penetrate their minds, understand it. And in order to influence them, to persuade them, you open your gates and let them talk. Let them put everything forth. And if you are a person that is strong and confident and knowledgeable in many circumstances, then you let them walk on you and you let them enter your mind as deep as possible. If you are truly superior, you are changing the vector all of a sudden. You have their perspective, you allow them to walk on you, on your mind, within. And you use the leverage to turn it in your favor in order to persuade and influence on their very ground. So, I don't interact with many people. I dislike that. Not because I'm an introvert. Naturally, I'm an extrovert. I prefer to command and dominate. However, in the good old Schopenhaueran school, people have usually shit in their mind. Unworthy shit. Two, you cannot deny the existence to an idiot, because he has the right to live. Nevertheless, you can avoid idiots, fools, cretins that damage without gaining anything, thieves and so on. So, associating with the right people is very important. Because when you associate with garbage, human garbage, then you become like garbage. So you need to be highly selective about people that you want to talk with, converse, that may influence you, that you influence and so on and so on. And if you are at such a level of advancement that you can read people without them saying a word, or after one sentence, by the gestures, by the superficial movements, people like to move a lot. That means they can't control themselves or discipline themselves. Now, often wise, I may be taken for a psychopath because I'm still disciplined, determined, focused. I don't like to look sideways. I look straight to the point. And people, even in the psychiatric business, say that these are the marks of a psychopath. Well, bullshit. Yogins that were grave, self-controlled, perfectly in reins of their bodies, minds and souls, were also much behaving in such a way. Now, how can you detect nervousness? How can you detect that a person is not much of worth? First, superficial movements, moving left and right, swinging the hair and all that. They cannot control themselves. That is a mark of lack of self-discipline. And if someone lacks self-discipline, they usually chat a lot, they gossip a lot, engage in small talk. There is no profundity in this. Now, how to detect someone of content, someone of spine, someone who is knowing? Usually, I see rarely such people in women raw beauties that have deep wise eyes, usually older people. 
How can you detect a male after traumas with great understanding, with great experience and differ it from a brute? Because brutes often have strong minds, but they have nothing to say. They can be rather strict, but they are primitives. Now people tend to detect each other. And experience and depth of one's mind, one's character, is often wise mirrored in those rare circumstances with others. So, all the games of social imbeciles that find themselves profound in this are well known. Sometimes it's better to pretend that one is an idiot and wear masks in order to gain advantage over the true fools. Sometimes it is better to play intelligent and dominate, or rhetorically influence with charm and curiosity, if such a situation demands such an action. So it is a bit of a utilitarian approach. Out of the breath of information and knowledge you have, you pick only the necessary. Out of the knowledge of humans, the inner workings of the minds, hearts and emotions, you pick only what is necessary. And I would like to read one poem to you that conveys it rather well. Tear of an old master, Sumerian mists. Blind man's bluff. Other years? Where was it? I didn't prepare well for this speech. Hmm. Mastership, perhaps? 139? Perhaps, perhaps. I don't remember the content of my poems. Monkey buddy. Anyway, I won't find it now. But the issue is, imagine a scenery in which there is an emperor and his ministers. And a foreign diplomat enters, and he tries to speak about his issues to the ministers and the emperor. And one of the mister ministers silences the diplomat. The ministers look at each other, the emperor nods. One of the ministers says to the diplomat, it is resolved, disagreed. And the diplomat says, I didn't even utter a word. And the minister says, All of us know everything you were supposed to say. You were supposed to talk for two hours, yet in two sentences, and by your face, and by everything you stand for, we know. You can go now. And that's how it should be solved. If you are a knower, knower of people, you don't need large conversations. Conversations have a purpose. But if you're dealing with someone who is read like an open book, there's no need to talk. We understand. Thank you.